Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Chris and today I'll be showing you how to do glass morphism in Photoshop. I'll be doing two types, this clear one and this type of frosted glass. So if you want to learn how to do this, please stick around. Let's get into it. First, let me just go ahead and delete out all of this stuff and then I'm going to reset my stuff to default so that I can just start from scratch. Okay, um, that should be fine. All right, so here we have our background and what we're going to do first is to create a square. So go over to your shape tool or rectangle tool um, and draw a square. So if you want to get it uniform, hold down and shift and drag like that. So about that size is good. The fill is white, it doesn't really matter what the fill is because we're going to go over here and decrease the fill to zero. The next thing that we're going to do is to double click on the rectangle layer and we're going to add a stroke. The stroke should be white with a size of one pixel. Position inside, blending mode normal and we're going to change the opacity to about 50%. Next, we want to go down to Inner Glow and we're going to set the Inner Glow gradient color to white and its transparency is at 100%. The opacity is at 40%. We don't want any noise on this right now and then the size is about 20 but you can adjust it to wherever you want but it will create this type of um, glow on the edges of your glass hit ok then select the background ctrl j to duplicate then drag that above your rectangle go to filter blur Gaussian blur and set this to about six. Six is good, yeah. Then right click and uh, create clipping mask. Now go back to your rectangle and increase the fill to a hundred percent. So here we have our clear glass effect. Now let's go ahead and create the frosted glass effect. So we're going to duplicate this rectangle here. We're going to drag it all the way over to the right. We're decreasing the fill to zero. Then we're going to double click to go back into layer styles and we're going to remove the inner glow. We're going to leave the stroke for now, but we're going to come back to it and adjust it later. What we need for this is gradient overlay. So select gradient overlay, go to the gradient, and for the leftmost color, you want to set it to something dark like this. Then you want to set the opacity to about 40%. Then go over to the rightmost color, make sure that it is solid white and you're setting the opacity of this to about 10%. We're keeping it at those values for now, um, but we can adjust it afterwards, which will affect the level of frostiness. <laughs> you know that frost that you see on glass. Yeah, let's get back to it. Um, so with that selected, we're just going to change the angle to about uh, minus 45 degrees. What this does, it will give you a little dark side and another side that's a bit lighter. Let me increase the transparency just for now so you can probably see it better. Put this to like that. So something like that is good. For the stroke, you want to do the same thing. So instead of um, the fill type being color, set the fill type to gradient. Click on the gradient, change this um, leftmost color to 
full white because we're doing the reverse now so this should be full white and the transparency should be at about 20 percent over here this should be that medium gray or dark color and its transparency should be at about 50. The opacity of the stroke, you want to increase that so that the stroke has more um, visibility here. And then set this, the, the angle to minus 45. Now, you want to copy the blurred background again drag it down to your second rectangle right click and create clipping mask then select your rectangle and bring the fill all the way back up to a hundred percent now we want to increase the gaussian blur of this background to about 15 about 20 26 26 is good somewhere there but because if it's frosted then the blur would be a lot more intense and then now you can go back to your rectangle layer and adjust your gradient overlay to um, whatever you want it to be so we can make it more opaque or we can increase this a bit and then do the same thing for white so it's up to you how you want to adjust that and then I'd like for the stroke to show up a bit more. So I'm going to increase this so I see it like that. And then on this side, increase that a bit more as well. And there you have it. That's how you can easily make this. And you can move them and position them anywhere you'd like and do all the other additional cool stuff that you want to do with them. Um, you can also use these things to, to create some level of automation if you, you know, use this regularly. But it's quick and easy to do and I hope this tutorial helped you. Please subscribe to this channel if you want to learn to do more things like this. Leave a comment to let me know your thoughts, let me know if there's something you're not understanding or maybe I skipped over something whatever the case is you can leave a comment i'll respond to all of them um share it as well share it with your friends share it with anybody else who is learning how to do similar things and i'm sure they'd appreciate it i'd appreciate it because you know we're sharing the knowledge but yeah thank you and have yourself a wonderful day